A number of people in Kumi districts have resorted to eating termites to survive in the wake of the famine that has ravaged their area. Early this year, the government delivered relief supplies to some of the affected districts to avert the loss of lives. But a letter authored by the Commissioner of Disaster Management at the office of the Prime Minister, Martin Awar, has raised eyebrows among a section of Ugandans. The letter has been circulating on social media. It's dated 24th April and addressed to the town clerk of Mbarara, instructing him to approve distribution of 600 bags of rice to the urban poor families in Mbarara municipality. Some of the people who read the letter described the directive by Commissioner Martin Awar as discriminatory and illustrative of the government's misplaced priorities. The reasoning is that there were other rural areas that were more affected by the drought. Now, the Minister for Relief and Disaster Preparedness, Hilary Neck, says he did not authorize the distribution of food to Mbarara as contained in the letter. I know I'm in charge, but unfortunately that decision to send to urban poor, I would not want to attribute to it. I don't know who made that decision, because urban poor is in Kampala here is worse. It's fairly low, and that's why we have a lot of now thugs around looting, fight, because they want to suffer, they want to eat. The revelation comes in the heels of growing public concern over the absence of food in the country as a result of the long dry spell. I don't know, but anyway, sometimes we make mistakes there, here and there, but those are mistakes. I don't think urban poor is part of our program. If you are poor, you go to the village, because most of these urban poor are villages. You go there and receive from there. The most affected areas are Karamoja, parts of Teso Subregion, and districts along the Katu Corridor, like Isinjiro. Hilary Neck made the remarks at a news conference in Kampala. During the briefing, Japan's ambassador to Uganda, Kazaki Kameda, announced a 22.6 billion shilling contribution towards the assistance of refugees in Uganda. Japan will continue to actively seek various ways which would enhance self-reliance and the resilience of refugees and the refugee hosting communities through the humanitarian to development nexus. This contribution is not only going to help alleviate <coughs> the suffering of the nationals in those refugee hosting areas, but also improve access <coughs> to water, health and education <coughs> to the many refugees and nationals that are living in those locations. According to UNHCR, 2,159 refugees from South Sudan have been entering Uganda daily since July last year. Between 13th April to 19th April, 10,993 refugees entered the country from the troubled neighboring nation. This makes Uganda the third largest refugee hosting country in Africa and eighth in the world. Such a big number of refugees require innovations to achieve durable solutions for them. Uganda is a best model of practice on how to protect refugees and how to invest in local populations. The ongoing influx of refugees in the West Nile is no doubt placing a lot of strain on host communities. Whereas Uganda's refugee policy has been applauded, there are concerns that it is biting off more than it can chew. We lock them out of our country. We shall not build a wall. The total amount we need per year is almost about 200 million US, do US dollars to feed the refugees. And currently, just if I were to project the shortfall for the coming six months from now until September, we have a shortfall of $59 million. Uganda will in June this year host a Solidarity Refugee Summit, which will be graced by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Shudan Ruchri, NTV.